Hi everyone, it's Keely. Welcome back to another video. Um, this week I have something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about the steps I take to make a digital illustration, starting with sketching. Um, first and foremost, I of course start with uh, gathering ideas for my sketch, um, but I didn't feel like I needed to include that part as it's kind of a given. Um, but first and foremost, I start with sketching. As always, I'm using my iPad Pro in Procreate. Um, and this is just a screen grab from the sketch that I did. Um, you can see I play around with placement a lot and um, a, quite a bit with composition <laughs> um, and what I actually want it to look like, but this one had a little bit clearer of an idea, so there's less composition play and more just fidgeting with her facial features. Um, after sketching, I move on to line art. Line art is probably, I would say, what takes me the longest out of any of the steps that I take. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, line art's pretty tedious. I do enjoy doing it, but it is also kind of mind-numbing sometimes, and that can be good or bad depending on the day. But yeah, line art is the next step that I take, and I usually do this with my art, not always, but um, in most cases I choose to do line art based artwork. Um, I am really attracted to flat color art um, with really detailed, uh, depth heavy line art, if that makes sense. Um, it's just the aesthetic that I'm usually going for when I set out to make a good piece of artwork. Um, so it's why I spend so much time on my line art. And also, I've kind of trained myself um, over the years to be very tedious, not tedious, what's the word I'm looking for, um, very, atten very attentive to the details um, while doing my line art because when I first started out, I couldn't make it clean, and so I spent years practicing trying to figure out how to make my line art look clean and crisp like so many people that I really admired. Um, and now I feel like sometimes it's almost gotten to a clinical point where it's like there's no life left because I've been so meticulous with uh, making everything straight and perfect. But I don't know, there's a balance to be found, I just haven't found it yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought today that I would talk a bit about the steps that I use to make my digital artwork because a lot of people ask me to make tutorials, but um, I feel like a tutorial would imply that I had something to teach you. And this isn't necessarily teaching, this is just more of talking about the steps that I personally take to make my artwork, um, but it in no way reflects like what is, you know, correct or uh, how most people make their art. This is just my personal preference, my personal choices, um, and I thought I would share them in a little more detail instead of just, you know, talking over my usual process. Um, so also in the line art, here, I just want to mention real quick, I do also do some editing, and you can kind of see that, like, especially in uh, the hair here, I'm doing just some, like, on-the-fly editing, basically, with uh, the flow of her hair, um, and that just kind of goes in the same category as line art, I would say, but um, I'm not just, like, following a sketch, I am kind of reworking some of the lines as I go. Um, I used to sketch exactly what I wanted to line and I would adjust nothing in the lining process or else that was a really big risk and I was just asking to fuck it up. Um, but nowadays I'm a little more confident with my vision and knowing how to execute it properly to where I feel comfortable um, adjusting things as I go. And you can also see me get rid of the sketch layer there as I go in to finish her hair um, because the light lines tend to mess with my eyes a little bit as I go for finer detail. So if I leave that sketch layer on, it makes it just a little bit harder for me to distinguish what I have lined and what is just a sketch, and then things end up messy. So I like to get rid of that layer at some point, usually during the hair, so that I can uh, just fit more detail in and be a little more tidy and precise with my work, but that's just personal preference. Um, if you feel more comfortable, you can line exactly on top of your sketch. Like I said, this is just how I like to make my artwork. This is by no means how every digital artist makes their digital art. But yeah, that's just a quick overview of how I do my line art. I don't really know much else to say about it. As always, my tools I use will be in my description box down below if you are interested in the pen I'm using as of this moment. Um, 
But yes, after I finished with my liner, I move on to flat color. And this is basically just where I start blocking in my color ideas. Um, as you can see, I adjust everything wildly. <laughs> I adjust everything wildly as I um, move along with the artwork. Um, my initial idea was blue skin and I eventually ended up going for uh, more of a peachy skin tone. Um, so this is mostly just to like get those color layers in place so that I can adjust them and turn them into what I want. Um, it's definitely not solid by any means. Um, but it's more of just a base for me to add things to. So as you can see here, I'm making her hair a sort of pink color. Um, and in a minute, you can see me adjust that to be a more green-blue type of shade. Um, this is really just a base for me to build upon. This is by no means like the final destination of the colors. They definitely get moved around quite a bit. Um, and there's a lot of uh, color adjustment and depth that goes on afterwards, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, I started with a little bit more fantasy color, and then once I got everything blocked in and saw the colors together, I realized I it wasn't really it wasn't really executing my vision very well. So I messed around with the colors here, changed her skin tone, changed her hair, and when I liked that, I decided to start building on the smaller colors, and this is where I kind of chose my secondary color palette, if that makes sense. Um, just like the accent colors, um, I ended up going with red, as you can see. I started with a pink idea. Uh, I wanted to do something that really contrasted that green. So I started with pink, I eventually moved on to red. Um, I've just been really loving like heavy red makeup lately, but that's just personal preference. Um, I do try my best to make sure things uh, simultaneously contrast and go with each other to make- ooh, hope y'all heard that little cat scream- that they simultaneously contrast and coordinate <laughs> so that they uh, stand out but don't clash, if that makes sense. This is just something I've kind of done by eye. I have no formula for this. I am not professionally trained, if you can't tell. Um, but yeah, after I've done blocking in color, I like to move on to color gradients and depth, as you can see in just a moment here. I'm sure there's a more professional name for this, but to me, gradients and color depth are basically just adding uh, subtle, soft depth to the skin and adding gradients to colors to make them more interesting because I personally really enjoy looking at gradients and I think that they make any color like just tons more interesting to look at um, especially if you are working with a fairly flat color and you want it to maintain the flatness but also just be a little more visually interesting a little more juicy to look at if that makes sense um, but after I'm done with that I like to move on to the shadows and unfortunately the first part of my shadows clip here uh, did get cut off because I didn't realize my camera had stopped recording um, but I like to go in with usually a purple color um, and go into the shadows of the face add that purple color in and then turn down the opacity to make it a more interesting shadow tone not just be like a brown or a grayish color um, I find the purple to be just be a little more visually interesting um, and then sometimes like in this instance here you can see me going in with a secondary shadow color um, so here you can see a little bit of what I was talking about. I go in with a really dark shade and I will eventually uh, lighten the opacity so that it is just a little softer and blends with things a little bit better. But sometimes I'll go in with a secondary uh, shadow color here so that it'll just like kind of amp up the depth and uh, just make it a little more visually interesting than just like a single layer of shadow if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I also like to go in with the hair usually. I The color I use on the hair kind of depends. Sometimes I'll go in with the same purple shade that I use on the skin if it works with the hair color. In this instance, I'm going in with a blue color. Um, the purple just didn't look right against the green. It didn't... colors didn't mesh well. So I'm going in with a blue. As you can see, I'm going in with it very dark so that I can see exactly where all of the color is going. And then after I'm done adding in the depth in the waves of the hair, behind her ear, underneath the jewelry, all that fun stuff, I'll go back into the opacity um, and I'll adjust it so that it's much lighter and you can see the colors play through one another. Um, this is kind of just a cheap, easy shortcut. 
uh, if you had a better understanding of color, unlike me, <laughs> um, you would be able to color pick the right color instead of just um, using opacity to do the work for you, but this is a super easy way to learn and it really does help you understand how colors work together better, um, if that makes sense. So definitely utilize your opacity tools when you guys are doing digital art because it's not something that you can really do so easily in traditional media and it's extremely helpful. Um, so I would say definitely utilize it and learn about your opacity tools. <laughs> um, but anyways, I then move on to highlights. And this is probably my favorite part, I would say, aside from just like base color picking. Um, yeah, highlights is, the highlight part is quite possibly my favorite. Um, so as you can see, I like to go in with the lips. This is usually with a couple different shades. Um, but I also go on top of the eyes, on the cheekbones, tip of the nose, down the bridge of the nose, um, the chin. Uh, if there's any cleavage exposed, I like to like highlight the cleavage to make it all juicy and delightful looking. Um, I also do her horns, her hair, and all that fun stuff which you can see here. I also just want to mention that along the way I have been adjusting the line art, but uh, the line art in color that is, but um, that didn't particularly have its own area because I think that you can either use uh, monochrome line art or you can use multicolored line art and that's just personal preference that's not um, I mean that's just up to your personal preference that's not something that I would consider a step exactly because sometimes I do use single color line art it just depends on the type of depth that I'm going for and uh, the overall look sometimes I really really like that dramatic black line art look and sometimes I'm going for something a little bit softer. So if you guys are going for a little bit of a softer look, I would definitely recommend playing out, playing around with your line art colors. Um, and sometimes if you want it to be more uniform, I suppose, um, monochrome line art is an excellent way to make that look more uh, like a singular piece of art, if that makes sense. It just makes it look more consistent throughout, so it really depends on the look that you guys are going for, but there's definitely merits to both of them. Um, as you can see here, I go and adjust the color of the line art on her jewelry, because I found that having uh, monochrome line art on the jewelry just kind of dulled it quite a bit um, in a way that I didn't particularly like, so I'm just going through and using the same colors that I used to... Uh, add shine to the fill of the jewelry to also add shine to the outline of the jewelry. So it kind of maintained that like nice metallic look but without, um, you know, being too underwhelming, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, I'm moving on to her hair here. Um, it's really important to pay attention to where you're putting your highlights on hair. Uh, it can really make or break the art because if you put highlights in all sorts of weird places, it just doesn't look right to the eye. And this is, again, something I learned just kind of by teaching myself. I have no, no formal education in art, as you can clearly see. Um, this is just kind of something that I like doing and I've found out that I like doing it via years of experimenting. Um, if this isn't your thing, that's totally fine, but this is how I've been adding highlight to my hair recently, which you can see I'm using the uh, brighter, lighter version of her hair color um, at full opacity. It's the same trick that I used with the shadows. I'm using that color at full opacity to make it really high contrast, so as I'm laying the color down I can see if there are mistakes, and then I will later go through and adjust the opacity and uh, make it just a little bit softer so that you can see the underneath color through the highlight. Um, so yeah, after that I like to move on to the background and final touches stage. Um, to me the final touches are usually adding this white highlight around certain parts of my art. It doesn't make it on every piece of art and it doesn't make it around every piece of the art, but it is something that I like to do. Um, final touches can include all sorts of things like adding glow to certain parts, um, you know, adding a sprinkle of freckles, um, adjusting any colors that you decide you didn't like. Um, you can adjust the overall color of the artwork and like the color balance and whatnot. Um, just anything that you, you know, just need to dabble with after the general work is done. Um, and then here I'm adding in a pretty simple but like cute sort of background. Um, 
with just some purples and some cute little gold stars. So yeah, um, I hope this video was helpful to everyone. I hope that this is what you guys were looking for when you asked me to make tutorials. <laughs> I know it's not a tutorial, but hopefully you learned some good pointers. Um, if you guys like my artwork, you can follow me on Instagram or Tumblr to see more. I have linked below all my social media, such as my Etsy shop, where you can go to purchase my artwork. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out a lot. And yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye!